Okay, so I have a customer that sent me a Definitive Technology Powerfield Supercube 3 subwoofer. This is just the internals. He didn't send me the speakers. Looking down in here, right off the bat, I see a bulged surface mount cap right here. So I haven't even hooked it up yet, done any tests. So I thought the first thing I do is go ahead and try to ESR all these capacitors and see what they look like before I go any further. Bunch of little caps on this board. We'll check all of those. Main filter caps over here, 1500 microfarad, 200 volt capacitors. Cause I believe this thing is a digital amplifier that probably runs off of the AC input. I don't see a switching power supply anywhere in this. So let's go ahead and do some ESR checks on all these capacitors and see how they fare. Okay, so I've got the uh, capacitors marked on this board. The main filter cap's 1500. These three are 220s. Might be kind of hard to see on the camera, but I went ahead and marked every capacitor on the board. If it's not marked like this one, it's a 100 microfarad cap. All the rest of these that are marked are 10 microfarad caps. Like I said, it might be kind of hard to see on the camera. Let's go ahead and check the main filter caps first. I'm gonna short the leads together and make sure I get 0.00, .00 and I do. So 0 0.02 and 0 0.01, perfectly fine. Just check the 220s. I expect to see probably half an ohm or less. 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.08. Those all seem to be perfectly fine. Now we'll just go up the board here. A 10, 1.4, perfectly fine. This is a 100. 0.9, another 100.9, and another 10, 1.5. 100 at 0.9, a 10 at 1.4, 100 at 0.95, a 10 at 0.44, another 10, 0.39, another 10, 1.4, a 100 at 0.9, another 100 at 0.9, another 100 at 1.0, another 100 at 1.0, a 10 at 1.4, another 10 at 1.4, 100 at 0.42, another 100 at 0.9, and last, another 100 at 0.86. So I like all these capacitors. I don't see any issues with these whatsoever. So I'm not finding any capacitor issues with the amplifier board at least. So let's go ahead and do an ohm check on these four output transistors real quick and just make sure that we can see some diode junctions on them. So first, I'm just gonna look for a short no short, no short, no short. Look for some junctions, 396 and 175. No short, no short, no short. 396, and this one is 632. No short, no short, no short. 397 and 633. No short, no short, no short, 397 and 191. So I'm thinking these are FETs. They all check perfectly fine. So I don't see any problem with this board whatsoever. I guess I should do a diode check on the bridge rectifier right here. Good, good, good. And good, so the bridge rectifier does test good. So next we'll go ahead and check the capacitors on the preamp board and see what they test like. So first I'll go ahead and check these three big filter caps right here. They're pretty easy to access. They're 470 microfarads, I believe. 0.08, perfectly fine. 0.08, perfectly fine. And 0.08, absolutely perfectly fine. Now it does have a couple of 220 microfarad coupling capacitors. These are non-polar coupling capacitors to not allow the base if you're using the speaker terminal inputs and outputs so you don't send the base to the mid-range high frequency speakers. So we can test those very easily just by going across the binding posts. 0.07 and 0.06. So that all looks good. So next, We'll go ahead and try to test some of these surface mount caps. So I've got a 100 with a bulge, it reads 0.75. I've got a 220 and it reads 1.6. 
The other bulged 100 reads 0 0.63. This 100 reads 0 0.69. This 100 is a 0.91. This is a 10 microfarad cap, 4.8. This 100 reads 0.71. Now some of these caps I can't get to. That's a 10.46. And then I've got three 100 microfarad caps that are really gonna be tough to get to. I can get to two of them pretty easily, 0.79. This is a 1.6, it's a 22 microfarad cap at 35 volts. Well, so far from what I can tell, all the capacitors test perfectly fine. Even these ones that are bulged a little bit test fine. I think I can get to this one capacitor right here by using the tab of this regulator because it appears that the positive pin does connect to the tab. So let's go ahead and use the tab as a common and I get 0.63, that's perfectly fine. Okay, well I have the unit hooked up to a speaker right now I'm feeding it speaker level audio to the inputs and check this out if I touch that capacitor which is a coupling cap to the preamp I get a hum so that tells me the power amplifier is actually perfectly fine over here if I just introduce a little bit of audio you can hear the hum. So that's telling me the problem is over here in the preamp board. So I'm just poking around with my finger over here. And some of the stages are working, but some of them are not. So the audio comes from this board right here, travels down this connector, goes through these two resistors, and I get nothing on the other side. Unfortunately, this is a multi-layer board, and I can't find a schematic for this unit anywhere. Even the bulge capacitors test within spec. I just don't know what to do on this thing. I mean, the preamp is working, but no matter where I put any of the controls, it really makes no difference whatsoever. I've checked the regulators right here. There's a TIP32C and an LM337. They are both supplying plus and minus 13 volts perfectly. No ripple whatsoever. But that sound that you hear in the background, that's the subwoofer making that sound. I have it connected to just a regular speaker. I get nothing down in here if, I, if I'm touching these chips and these caps. That's the subwoofer level control right there. Could it be something as stupid as the pot's just bad? I kind of doubt it. Because if I flip this board over, well, I get nothing on the pot. But I do get something if I touch the phase and the level control. So I know those are working. Well, now I'm getting something over here. That's strange. But still no audio. I hear a bump when I turn that. Wow, that's weird. Okay, I'm gonna check the uh, subwoofer level control pot with the meter and see if it's any good. All right, so check this out. I don't know if you can see it down here, but it says A5K. That's an audio 5,000 ohm taper potentiometer. Audio taper, I mean, it's more like a logarithmic taper than a linear taper. Voltmeters on ohms, auto range. So I should get 5K from these two end points of the potentiometer and I get 2.4 million ohms and charging, 2.9 and charging on this one. So if I turn the pot all the way to one side, I should get zero ohms and I get 4.2 million ohms and 3.5 million ohms. If I turn it all the way this way, I should get zero ohms on these two terminals, four million. 5.4 million, 4.8, 4.7. This pot is bad. So just as a test, I'm gonna see if I can find another pot and just strap it onto here with a couple of leads and see if we get a different response.
Okay, so I have a 5K pot. I just soldered the leads to it. So let's check the resistance now of the new pot. End to end, we should see about 5K. Let's see, 4.7K. 4.6. Now it's at a minimum volume right now. So I should see 0 ohms. 2.8, close enough. And 3.1. Let's go ahead and turn it to a maximum volume. Now I should see 0 ohms on these two leads. 2.4 and 2.3. Since it's an audio taper control, if I put it in the middle, I should see, so 3.9, so I should see about 1K on this side, and I get 910 ohms, and on this one, 3.8, and again, I should see about 1K, 898. Let's go ahead and connect it back up and see if we get better results. All right, well, check this out. I get bass. The level pot is bad. I wonder if the other ones are bad too. I don't really see any difference when I turn them. That one does seem to make a difference. Okay, so I thought I would check the other two pots on here. If I measure the resistance here, I get 0.3 and 0.2, which tells me that these leads are shorted on the circuit board, no matter where I put the pot. But I do actually see resistance changes. I get 3.7K there and 1.8K, and if I turn it all the way the other way, I get 22.6K and 25.7K. And according to the nomenclature on the pot, this is a 20K pot, so this one is actually working. But check out this third pot. This is the phase alignment, end to end, I get nothing, absolutely open. So that's minimum, I should have a short here, I've got nothing. Now these two leads are shorted together, I get 0.3 and 0.3, but I never get a resistance reading no matter where I put this pot. So that pot is bad also. And what makes it even worse is there's no data on the pot whatsoever. I looked all around it, there's nothing that tells me the value. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and tack just a 1K resistor across these leads just to have some kind of continuity as if it was turned down all the way, which would be the zero phase. I could actually just put a short across it, but I'm gonna put a 1K resistor. We'll tack it on there and see what happens. Okay, resistor is in place. I should get 1,000 ohms here, and I do. Exactly 1,000 ohms. So let's go ahead and power the unit back up and see what happens. Well, it did power up. I do have base control. The low pass is working. So mind you, I just have this connected to a six inch speaker. I don't have an actual subwoofer cavity to put it in, but it is actually working. So it's gonna need a couple of pots. And I'm going to have a problem finding out the value of this one right here. But this is just the initial diagnostic, the troubleshooting stage. So if you've got a Supercube 3 that has no audio, check the resistance of all three pots and see what you get. But I can pretty confidently tell you the main app is working correctly, as you can hear. It's not cutting out anything. It sounds good. There's no noise now. When this pot was bad, there was a lot of noise because I think the amplifier was just trying to amplify anything it could get, and it didn't have the input impedance that it was looking for. So anyhow, that's the diagnostic stage. I don't know if I'll get the repair or not. The customer might just want me to go ahead and just leave this pot loose in there. He can adjust it and put it back together and then adjust his subwoofer level on his receiver as he sees fit. Anyhow, that's it. The diagnostic portion of this subwoofer. The Definitive Technology Super Cube 3 subwoofer. Supposedly, this thing is rated at about 650 watts RMS. This thing must be a powerhouse. Anyhow, Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, 
norcal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.